Wow, that was an experience. Let's talk about Alex Garland's new masterpiece, Civil War. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass. I'm here to talk to you about Civil War, which is Alex Garland's new film. It's coming to theaters on April 12th, 2024. Alex Garland, you might know as the writer director of Ex Machina, Annihilation, and Men. And now he has a new film coming to theaters. I loved Ex Machina. I didn't love Men as much, but oh my God, this movie is so good. My hot take is I definitely think you should watch it. It is just a brilliant, tense, and unsettling imagining of what a modern civil war would look like. It has some amazing and terrifying imagery. It has some really, really intense scenes, and it has a fantastic start and an amazing ending, and also it just stays with you afterwards. It was such an experience. I really think you should check it out. So all that being said, I'm going to tell you a little about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't know what happens in this movie, and you might not, there are some big surprises along the way. Uh, I would turn it off when I get there, but before that, though, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler-free. I'll let you know when I get to those spoilers. So Civil War takes place in this, as you'd imagine, Civil War between, I guess, you know, America as we know it, which is kind of the, you know, Washington, D.C., and I think kind of the Midwest area, and then the Western forces, which is California and Texas and some of the other states. They are battling out in an intense fight in America. And during this, you have seasoned war photographer Lee, played by Kirsten Dunst, uh, who, along with her colleague Joel, played by Wagner Mora, want to get to Washington, D.C. to get an interview with the president. They think that this might be one of their last chances. They want to get there before it is too late. And so they embark on this journey to get there. But are they going to be able to make it in time? And are they going to be able to overcome the obstacles and dangers that happens when you're traveling in this war-torn country, which is America? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. So... All that being said, things I loved about this movie. The first, look, I love the opening. I thought it started out really well. It kind of framed this conflict well. It framed kind of the sense of danger that you would have in an American Civil War. And it was an explosive opening. It was a fantastic opening. I really liked the way that it started. It really kind of got your attention right off the bat. Uh, the second thing I loved, look, I love the imagery. Like, it is just some wonderful and terrifying imagery. You've got, you know, battles in America. Everything looks familiar but different. You've got burned out buildings, abandoned cities. You've got graffiti everywhere. You've got scenes of war. Even in, like, a beautiful, picturesque countryside, you'll have, like, some fire in the distance. Like, something is on fire. Or you'll have, you know, at night you'll have, uh, you know, bullets whizzing by, tracer rounds whizzing by, um, some sort of artillery fight in the background. Everything looks familiar and relatable, but also eerily different. I just loved it. It was such a great way to, like, frame how this conflict could, like, hit home, because it is hitting home. The third thing I loved, I love the authenticity. It, it's kind of related to the imagery, but everything looks very legit. The weapons look legit. The, uh, you know, OCPs by the military individuals look legit. The rebels look like they have kind of thrown together things. You'll have, you know, casual clothes with like uh, flak vests over it and things like that. Like everything has like a great attention to detail when you've got, uh, you know, Humvees, they look like Humvees. When you've got a downed helicopter, it looks really good. Like everything, all the hardware looks well done. It looks practically done. It doesn't seem like there's that many special effects. I'm sure there are, but it does seem like a lot of this is built with sets and built with actual military hardware or things that are made to very much look like military hardware, which I, you know, is an important part when you're trying to kind of frame this larger than life kind of unimaginable conflict. It's good to have that type of authenticity so you don't break your sense of immersion. Uh, the fourth thing I love and one of the best things about this movie is the sound. The sound is fantastic. Both the like sounds of battle, you know, the, the, the cackle of gunfire, the explosions, and the way that they use sound to kind of emphasize the drama. When you have a big explosion, sometimes like the sound will pop out because you, you know, once an explosion happens, you can't actually hear. All you hear is like a ringing. Those are very effective. It really kind of helps to heighten what is happening and helps you really kind of like to feel the uh, intensity of what is going on. And then also the, the music is really good. The, kind of related to the sound, the music is really, really good. They've got a really nice soundtrack, like, Americana kind of songs, although I think there some of them are, are, are more you know modern versions of it, but just a really good soundtrack that both helps to frame the conflict because they're all kind of like Americana songs, but also this is kind of a road trip, a really weird, messed up road trip, and so those songs also help to kind of hit the mood and and come in during some fairly intense scenes or come in during some wondrous, horrible scenes. And it's very effective when they do it. Uh, the fifth thing, fifth thing I liked. Uh, the cast is phenomenal. Look, Kirsten Dunst does a really good job. Like she definitely looks and feels like 
uh, a war photographer who has seen a lot, who is kind of weary from everything she's done. Uh, Wagner Mora, I love Wagner Mora. I think he's a fantastic actor, and he's really good as Joel, her you know companion. He is the one that wants to like do the interview. He's the one that wants to get the story. She's the photographer, and he is like an adrenaline junkie, and it is fun to see kind of his reaction to things. You got Nick Offerman as the president, which I thought was fantastic. It was nice to see Nick Offerman in like a very serious role. And the, and the other companions that are going with him, Kaylee Spaney and uh, Stephen McKinley Henderson, they are both fantastic additions. It makes for a more interesting road trip, a more interesting film when you've got all these characters and they're so well done. The sixth thing, I think sixth thing, the sixth thing I love, there is an insane amount of tension. I mean, it's it's a war movie first and foremost, and you have some very tense scenes when you're not sure what is going to happen, both when you're seeing something that should be normal but doesn't feel right so you're not you're worried that there's going to be like a gunshot or some explosion or something like that and also when you have some you know intense moments like gunfire gunfights you're always wondering if someone's going to get shot if something bad is going to happen and it like there are some moments when you're just holding your breath when you're waiting for like the trap to spring or you're waiting for this terrible thing to happen that you know is going to happen but you're not sure they're very very tense moments and it heightens everything about this film and the last thing i loved the ending the ending is phenomenal it is just a really well done ending a nice way to kind of like frame this whole conflict i'm not going to go into it right now i'll go into it in the ending section but it is a, a spectacle definitely something you should check out so all that being said there really wasn't anything i didn't love about this movie i thought it was really really well done i was captivated from start to finish uh it was a nice length it's 109 minutes never feels like it's very long it feels like it is a journey and it feels like you there is new stuff along the way so Look, I definitely think you should check it out. It is an experience. It is a masterpiece. And it is also like strangely a scary situation because it feels like something that could happen if like our current discourse, our current trajectory just kind of is expanded and kind of taken to the extreme. This doesn't feel like too, too far off. So Civil War is something that you should definitely experience. I think you should see it in theaters, uh, a really good screen, a really good sound system will definitely amplify the things about this movie that are really well done so check it out when it comes to theaters on april 12th 2024 and if you do check it out let me know what you think let me know what you liked and didn't like let me know what i got right and wrong i'd love to hear it. and i'm going to now go into the ending section so if you don't want to know what happens in this movie and you might not there are some big surprises i would turn it off now because there will be spoilers so Civil War is about a civil war, an imaginary American civil war where you have, I guess, the American forces, which seem to, they don't really get into the full size. I think there was one graphic partway in that shows the states that are in the various alliances, but they don't go through like a, a rundown of it. But the American forces seem to be like Washington, D.C. and then, you know, some of the Midwest kind of states, I think. Uh, and then you have the Western forces, which is mainly California and Texas. I think Colorado's in there as well. They are the kind of main opposing force in this civil war. Florida is mentioned, although I wasn't sure if Florida was part of the Western forces or if it was its own separate kind of uh, subset that were trying to fight against the Americans. I'm not certain. I guess they're probably part of the Western forces, given that I think they were trying to like get some other states to kind of secede uh, with them. But I am not certain, but the two main forces are the, the American forces and the Western forces. Now, so in this, you have, uh, you know, some journalists who are covering the carnage, covering what is happening. And it starts with Lee and Joel covering this, like, New York protest. The, you know, the military is distributing water in New York. People are trying to fight to get to the water. For some reason, they're they're not distributing it. Uh, and so, they're, like, a scuffle breaks out. And during this... Uh, Lee meets Jesse, who is a young photographer. She idolizes Lee. She wants to do what Lee does. Uh, Jesse is trying to become a war photographer, and Lee is like an established old hat at this. Uh, they meet, and they, you know, she gives her some quick advice. And then during this uh, protest, a suicide bomber comes and blows up the the water station, which I thought was a it was a really well done scene. It really kind of framed how you know close to home this could be because it is just a water protest, and then someone like runs in holding an American flag. Lee sees this, grabs Jesse, dies behind uh, like a like a car, and then boom, the whole thing blows up. And then when, the, when it blows up, like the sound pops out, all you see is carnage. There's a really well done extra introduction that shows like how, you know, what we see in other countries, you know, the kind of conflicts that happen in other countries could be translated back here at home. So after this, Jesse tracks down Lee. Uh, you know, she she wants to get some more information. She always wants to meet her. She wants to return this like neon vest that Lee gave her. And during this interaction, Jesse finds out what Lee's plans. Well, we all find out what Lee, Lee's plans are. Lee and Joel 
want to go to D Washington, D.C. They th it seems like the American government is going to fall soon. And so they want to be in Washington, D.C. to get an interview with the president before the American government falls. And so they're leaving the next day. And, and when they do leave, Jesse decides to tag along. She wants to learn from Lee. She wants to kind of get this experience, as does Sammy, this like old hat journalist who has mentored Lee through her career. Um, he needs a ride, I think, but he also, I think, wants to come and tag along just to like have one last adventure. And so this crew goes and drives to DC, right? A simple drive. You know, I've done, I've done that drive, DC to New York. It's like three and a half, four hours, depending on traffic and tolls and how you go. No, not in war-torn America. They can't go straight to DC because there are blockades and there is, you know, security and they can't get through those roads. So they get to D.C., they're going to have to drive west to Pittsburgh, down through West Virginia, down into Charlottesville, and then up into D.C. That is the route that they're going to take to get to D.C. So what should be a four-hour drive is going to be a multi-day drive as they are making their way. Now, I'm not going to go into like everything that happens along the trip, but it, it, there is some very intense stuff. Uh, along the way, they see some conflicts. Uh, you, you know, They embed with some forces to get some pictures and get some stories and things like that. You get some really intense fighting and these journalists are like right there in them you know they're wearing press flak jackets and have like press helmets but in the heat of battle like they are still at risk they're they're trying to be kept safe they are trying to like stay it back but they still want to get the pictures they still want to get the stories and so they're in the middle of these battles they're in the middle of these uh encounters and they have to trust that you know both sides are going to respect them as press right the other side is shooting at them, they have to hope that they're not going to intentionally shoot press or intentionally create an issue. And they also have to hope that the side that they're on is going to protect them. And in every one of these encounters, they are documenting, they're taking pictures. And the film does a really good job of like showing this. It'll like show the view through the camera as people, as they're taking pictures and like snap like frames of what is happening and show you some like very intense moments through this like black and white picture frame of what is going on. It is a really well done motif. They, they do it a lot and it helps you to kind of like see what it is they're seeing and what they're trying to capture, why they are so intense about capturing these scenes. Now, as they're driving, eventually they make their way into, I think, West Virginia. I think they were in West Virginia here and they get passed by this crazy car that's driving right up to them. And you're worried like, oh my gosh, like what's going to happen? Is someone going to like try to take them out? Turns out it is one of their friends. It is one of their like journalist friends, someone that knows them, this person named Tony and his driver, uh, I think his name is Bohai. Uh, they have been following them, which seems unrealistic because they had a pretty intense journey. But uh, in the movie, Tony and Bohai have been following them. Joel let slip where they were going and uh, Tony and Bohai want to get those well to capture the story. So they have this like intense, fun scene where they finally recognize who they are. And then Tony is kind of a crazy person. So he goes, they're driving side by side down this road. And Tony like goes from one car to the other. Uh, he goes into uh, Lee and Joel's car. And then Jesse goes from Lee and Joel's car to Tony's, what was Tony's car. Now it's Bohai's car. And they drive off, you know, like a fun, like, hey, we'll see you there. Every, you know, you think, okay, this is fun. But then you don't see the car after that. And you're like, okay, well, they're just playing another trick. Lee starts to get worried. She can't see the car. She doesn't want anything bad to happen to Jesse. Uh, she's kind of like taking on like a responsibility role for Jesse. She kind of like is trying to mentor her and, and kind of help her through the system. So Lee gets nervous. They drive, they drive, they try to find it. They don't see the car. And then eventually they see the car pulled over by the side of the road with the doors open. You're like, okay, that's not a good sign. That is never a good sign. They park and they kind of make their way in. And eventually you see what happened. You see uh, Jesse and Bohai kind of taken by what look like soldiers and they are uh, on their knees. Uh, it looks like they are captured or about to get executed. And you see these soldiers dumping these civilian bodies into a mass grave. And I'm not sure which forces these soldiers were. I think if I had to guess, like, they, so they were in OCPs, but they didn't have any patches on. So my guess is they were either people that weren't military, but were like, essentially cosplaying as military to kind of get the authority or i think there were american forces who because the american side had you know had been losing ground and, and was seen to be falling soon maybe they hadn't had orders maybe their like commander had been killed maybe they just you know defected who knows and so they weren't acting under any orders and they were doing some terrible things they were killing a bunch of civilians and throwing them into a mass grave it seems like maybe they were taking over this town uh you know just like taking the land for themselves 
you're not sure, but what they were doing is definitely not good, and they don't want anyone seeing this. So it seems like either they stopped Jesse and Bohai and kidnapped them, or Jesse and Bohai stopped, wanted to see what was going on, and then got captured. Now, Lee, Joel, and Tony want to stop this. They don't want them to get killed. Sammy's like, no, like we can't go in there. Like They don't want this to be seen. They're going to kill them. Lee and Joel and Tony kind of feel a sense of obligation to these people, so they go and try to stop this. And what you get then is a very, very intense scene where... Uh, one of the soldiers, played by uh, Jesse Plemons, is ask is like essentially asking them like where they're from. You know, he's trying to see you know if they're American or not, and he seems to be kind of like off the handle. A, they're dumping bodies into a mass grave, and he's putting something on there. Maybe it's lie. I'm not 100 percent sure, but so that is you know already showing that he's kind of off the handle. And then he starts to ask them where they're from, and he eventually he he shoots Bohai at the start because Bohai looks foreign and so he just shoots him right off the bat and then he starts asking these people where they're from and this kind of causes everyone to get really nervous of what's going to happen because these people are clearly you know doing something bad it seems like they're happy to kill and so he starts asking people where they're from and you know i think lee was from colorado so that that's okay uh joel was from florida they said okay that you know that's america uh jesse was from i think missouri they're like oh yeah good good red light america Tony is apparently a foreign correspondent. He's from Hong Kong. And when the, you know, the military, when, when Jesse Plemons character hears this, he just shoots Tony right off the bat. Boom. Like no questions asked. Boom. So this causes everyone to get very, very scared because they're worried that they're going to get killed next. You have a, another insanely tense scene where you don't know if someone's going to get shot. And that's when you hear an engine and Sammy comes flying in with the car, hits Jesse Plemons and the other, Military, like soldier, soldier who was there knocks them over. Uh, Jesse, the character, falls into the pit as he's trying to like dive out of the way of this car. They try to get her out. They're like, they're like We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Uh, there's this really intense scene where Jesse realizes she's in this death pit surrounded by dead bodies and it is like horrified by it. She gets pulled out. They all get in the car, they drive off. And as they're driving off, one of the other soldiers, uh, who was there grabs a gun and starts taking some pot shots at the car. They all escape. Seems like they're fine. Uh, Jesse is throwing up because of the, how intense that was. They're all kind of like nervous. And then Sammy, who was driving the car, is like, we gotta pull over. And they're like, we can't pull over. Like, we're too close. You know, we're, we're so close. Like, they can catch up. He's like, no, we gotta pull over. And you look down and Sammy is shot. Uh, Sammy took a bullet, I guess, from from one of the, uh, the gunfire rounds. Which, I don't know how that would have happened given the angle and whatnot, but you know, it makes for an intense scene. They stop, they keep driving. Um, Sammy's in the back, and you don't see much other than just like you see Sammy kind of looking out the window, you see them driving, and they make their way down to Charlottesville. They get to Charlottesville, which is, uh, I guess, a Western Forces base, uh, maybe one of the closest bases to DC, I would imagine. And there we find out that Sammy died. Sammy died from his gunshot wounds. And you're like, okay, that's horrible. But then Joel finds out from some embedded correspondents some people that have been embedded with the Western forces that it seems like DC is going to fall very, very soon. Uh, the Western forces are essentially preparing their final assault on DC. So to make matters worse, not only did Sammy die, he died before they could even get the story. Like they're not going to be able to get the story. They don't think they're going to be able to get to the president because DC is going to have fallen by then. And so essentially his death was in vain. This leads to some intense anger, some intense emotions. So the next day, the uh, Western forces move out. And it's this, in this big scene where you've got all these like uh, helicopters picking up Humvees. You've got uh, what looks like maybe F-35s flying in the air. Like everyone's getting ready to assault Washington, D.C. Uh, and and once you know it, Lee, Joel and Jesse are there as well. Um, they you know tag along with the Western forces. They get there. And then you have the assault on D.C., which is an amazing amazing scene sequence whatever you want to call it it is surreal it is intense it is one of like both my favorite and also like most unsettling things i've seen in the movie because you've got a, like a, a full-on ground war in washington dc you have uh, an intense fight at the lincoln memorial where someone's like hiding the lincoln memorial and they have to try to like take the person out you've got fighting on you know, I think K Street probably, or at least like Pennsylvania Avenue. You got some fighting on 17th Street. As these forces are slowly advancing, you get some like aerial views of them flying over DC and you've got like snipers in various buildings. Uh, it is a very, very intense scene. It's at night too. So everything is kind of amplified. 
And eventually, the fighting gets to the uh, the OEOB, and they try to like break down the gate to the White House. And so you've got Joel, Lee, and um, Jesse there capturing all of this, like capturing the kind of siege of the White House. And eventually, they break down the gate, and that is when uh, an on like the what appears to be the president and an entourage try to escape. It's like two suburbans and one of the limousines. They try to get out, but they're surrounded. Those get shot up. Uh, you know, they take out all the passengers, and there's a commotion because they're like people think, oh, the president's here. Like the president tried to escape, they got him, and so everyone is focused on that. And Lee is like, he didn't leave. Like he he's still in the White House. She has this intense feeling that that's what happened. So Lee, Joel, and Jesse head to the White House. Probably not a good idea during like the siege of DC when they think that they, you know, the government is going to fall, but they do it anyways. They head to the white house. And while they're doing this, some, they, they seem to be special forces. I think they were probably special forces. Some special forces folks see them do this and are like, they're going to the white house. Like we should go too. So Lee, Jesse, and Joel head to the white house and behind them are like five, probably special forces soldiers. They get into the white house. They look around. It is, you know, destroyed there are bodies around there's you know blood in places it is a, again an intense scene and you've got the special forces soldiers coming up right behind them and they say like stay back so then you have like the fault like the assault on the white house where they're going through the halls taking out people that are left trying to defend and it is again a very surreal scene because you've got military individuals like they're in ocps or you know equivalent camo gear versus like secret service essentially in the white house. And that visual is intense. Like you've got like suit and tie secret service agents fighting military folks in the white house, in the hallways, like from the white house cubicles, like from the various offices. And through this all, you've got Lee and Jesse taking pictures. I'll like take pictures or they'll like go into a hallway, take a quick picture and dive to the side to make sure they don't get shot. And eventually Jesse makes a mistake. There, there's some fighting. She comes out to get a picture. It feels like she probably could have taken the picture and and still do, but I don't know. She's like stalled or something. Maybe she saw what was happening and like froze. Lee recognizes this and pushes her down to make sure that she doesn't get shot. But in the process, Lee is now standing up. Jesse's on the ground and Lee gets shot. Like one of the things that is most interesting about this is that Jesse from the ground is apparently like fully in the like war photographer mode because while this is happening, she doesn't even register it. She just like puts her camera up and starts taking pictures and captures like Lee getting shot. And uh, like, she doesn't get, con like I think she is fully viewing this as like, I have to capture this moment, like living through the lens and not really even registering what is happening because Lee, get Lee her like hero, her idol gets shot in front of her and all she's doing is like capturing the picture. Now, maybe she also just wanted to like memorialize this because that's probably what Lee would have wanted. But in any event, Lee gets shot, Lee goes down. Jesse doesn't seem to like, Jesse seems to like register her a little bit, but she still has to keep going. She still has to get these pictures. This is a, an important historical moment. This is what she's been like waiting for. She has to keep going. So her and Joel keep following the, the forces and leave Lee behind. Now, eventually, they get to the Oval Office after, you know, negotiating with a press secretary, not negotiating very long. Um, they get to the Oval Office, and they find the president. They find Nick Offerman kind of hiding under his desk. They drag him out. It looks like they're about to execute him. And that's when Joel, like, runs runs forward and says, no, no, stop, 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 stop. Uh, he wants to get that story. He wants to get that interview with the president. And he tells the president, like, I need a quote. I need a quote from you. And the, and the president, you know, Nick Offerman, is like terrified. He is intensely scared. And he says, D -d don't let them kill me. Don't let them kill me. And Joel says, yeah, that'll do. And then the uh, special forces troops open fire on the president and take him out. And of course, Jesse's there capturing us all, taking pictures. And that's the end of the movie. That is, uh, that is Civil War. During the credits, there is a picture, like a trophy picture kind of of the five special forces troops that were in the oval office with the president, you know, the, like taking pictures with the dead president. It is, a, it slowly develops as the credits happen. And again, it is an interesting visual. It is kind of an intense ending to this. And I don't know if it's a happy ending. Like if this movie is a happy ending, I mean, I guess 
technically the war is over, right? The Western forces won. And so the president is done. And, and I guess now the Western forces will establish the government and hopefully life will go back to normal. But it still is like the fall of America. So it is an interesting end. It is an end to this war, theoretically, but it is also like an end to like this government and, and kind of America as we know it. Hopefully it'll be a better America. You don't really know. But either way, that is Civil War. It is, again, just a really intense, amazing film. I really loved it. I thought it was, I was kind of captivated throughout, uh, you know, both with how like unsettling it was to have a conflict, like a like an armed kind of realistic conflict in America. And also just how well done this movie was. It, it feels legit. It feels real. It feels very authentic and so i loved all that i thought it was a really fantastic movie i definitely think you should check out when it comes to theaters on april 12th 2024 and if you do see it let me know what you thought let me know what you liked and didn't like i would love to hear it and uh thanks so much for watching if you like this review please like and subscribe to this channel it helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you thank you